your weekly view of young leaders taking big steps. This is NextGen. Sponsored by PFI Westernware, home of Boot Daddy. Today we traveled to Miller, Missouri to talk milk and learn all about the Dairy Foods Career Development Event from Miller FFA. Well, the Dairy Foods uh, Career Development Event has been around a long time. Uh, we haven't typically trained it here at Miller. Mm -hmm. We had a student teacher last spring, Mr. Tanner Koenig, from, did his student teaching here. And he wanted to train a dairy foods team, so we turned him loose with some of our better students. Mm -hmm. And obviously they were very successful and won the state contest. Take me through uh, the overall all aspect of training them and getting them prepped and, and the purpose of the contest. Well, the pr uh, training the contest is different aspects from milk off flavors to cheese and dairy, non-dairy that some of the kids will be showing you a little bit later. Uh, so the purpose of the contest, first and foremost, is just quality assurance to make sure mm -hmm. that we are providing a quality product dairy product in this case to the American consumer. Uh, so not only is it the quality assurance part of the dairy product, but it's the life skills the students learn like critical thinking, decision making, being dedicated to purpose and practicing yeah. and working hard. Well, true life skills. Well, let's go meet your, your team and uh, have them teach me a little bit about um, what they learned throughout this year. So Lexi, we have the Milk Off Flavors part of the competition in front of us. Tell me about it. Um, so basically we have um, 10 milks that we have to taste for defects. And these are the most common ones in front of us. And these are natural occurring defects that you would find on the farm? Uh, yes. So this one, um, you would first want to smell it. And if you smell it, it okay. has kind of a... Oh, I can smell. Yeah, the uh -huh. garlic and onion. So at a competition, you would taste each milk, but we don't swallow it, correct? Yeah, you'll spit it back in the cup. Okay. <laughs> so, when you taste the milk, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, real bad. So you want to really like swish it around in your mouth and sometimes even like open your mouth, get an airflow in there. So when we do this, um, after we taste it, we grade it on a scale of one to ten. Okay. Ten being no defect, the best milk, one being very, very gross. So how would you rate this one? Um, well, the scoring for garlic and onion is 531, and that was a light to medium, so I would Light? Give, whew, yeah, it wasn't that bad. There's been <laughs> worse. Um, so I would give it probably a three. Okay. Overall purpose of this competition is to make sure that we have um, high quality milk in the stores. And so this testing is done um, on the farm and then it gets it's picked up by DFA and heads to like a Highland. And Highland, they're testing these also? Uh, yes, so um, usually the off flavors will be tested at the farm, but when they reach Highland, they do test like um, antibiotic tests because antibiotics are very bad milk. We don't want those. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have the cryoscope test, which tests for adulteration with water. Um, we test for high bacteria counts and high somatic cell counts. Basically just make sure that there's nothing wrong with the milk that will make it go bad faster. Tori, I think I'm going to enjoy this part of the competition a little better. Take me through um, the cheese ID. Okay, so there's 20 cheeses that we have to learn, and along with that we have to learn characteristics of them. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole cheese matrix that we uh, memorize and we had to learn the fat percentages, the moisture content, where they originated from, and just like all the characteristics of the cheese. And out of those, there's 10 cheeses laid out that we have to identify and write down the characteristics that match with it. So when you've got a plate of cheese in front of you, what type of uh, mental notes are you checking off in your head to identify what cheese is in front of you? Uh, I first look at color, so as you can see, mm -hmm. we have a yellow cheese here yeah. compared to the white ones. Um, and also this one has an orange rind and there's clues like that that can give it away sometimes. And you can also see if there's processing holes. Okay, let's try this yellow cheese. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what should I be looking for? Uh, so with the yellow cheeses, you'll be looking for if it's a cheddar, how sharp the taste is. Okay. Uh, and if it another yellow cheese is processed American, it'll be more creamy and mm -hmm. have that processed taste. Well, luckily you chose three cheeses that I really like and I learned a lot about them.
So Emma, I understand that this is part of the team activity that you competed in at National. Take me through that aspect of the competition. Yes, ma'am. So here we have the titratable acidity test. So we're trying to get this color here, mm -hmm. the white milk. We're trying to make it to just a very slight pink color. Okay, and what is that it way, testing? It's testing for acidity levels in milk. And if the acidity level is above 0.25%, then they reject the milk and they just have to do what they will with it. Okay, take me through the process. Okay, so first we will take five drops of this phenyl daily, the solvent that we're putting in here. Okay. We'll put it just right in here. One, two, three, four, five. So then in here we have sodium hydroxide, 18 milliliters of it. And so we're just gonna take it down. We're just gonna let it pour into the milk that's in here until we get kind of a pink color. Okay. So it looks like we have a hint of pink in here. What does that mean? So that means there was, that we've kind of matched out the acidity level that we found. And okay. so the level that it was at on here, we subtracted it and stuff, and we have about a 0.37% of acidity. So this milk would be rejected from the milk plant. And what happens is, this happens whenever the milk is stored at like high temperatures, mm -hmm. and that's what usually makes it acidic. So Dakota, we have part of the dairy non-dairy competition in front of us. Tell me about it. Okay, so the dairy non-dairy part of the contest is pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> uh, you just go through, there's 10 samples. It could be anything from butter to margarine to sour cream to fake sour cream uh, or fake artificial. Artificial, <laughs> Right. Well, let's take a test and then you can tell me what other identifying characteristics we're looking for. Okay, so with something that you're looking at is the texture. Okay. Um, you can kind of see that this one, it doesn't really leave a whole lot on the side. There's some visible mm -hmm. stuff but on the side. But I noticed the color is a little different. It is a little discolored and there are some something kind of, a little bit of like texture, if mm -hmm. you look at it closely. A little thicker. Mm -hmm. Can we smell it? Then it's just kind of... It's thin. It's really thin. Mm -hmm. It's really, uh, there's no other way to describe it than So nutty. what do we got here? This is almond milk. Oh, okay. Almond milk would be scored a non-dairy variable fat on here. Okay. Everything that is not an actual dairy product is considered non-dairy variable fat. Okay. Now this one, already looks uh, pretty thick. So yeah. it's gonna eliminate it, probably the non-dairy options, right? Yeah, okay. it, it does leave quite a bit of residue. And, and the overall you know, purpose of this competition kind of goes back and falls in line with the others is, is uh, food safety and quality, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can always, it, it's good to be able to tell what you're drinking mm -hmm. and what you know, you're using, but uh, it's always good to be able to say that you know, that is actual, that it's good quality, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. That what you're purchasing is right, what you're paying that when for. You, and that you know, and if you know, if you're able to taste and determine the, the, quali the content of the fat in something, you know that you're getting what you pay for. 